Right, so now, that's really awkward. So we're going to be getting the engine from the stand, uh, placing the flywheel and the clutch on it, and then placing the gearbox on. Okay, so a few things about that. Number one, I'm just using seat belts. Um, these can take a massive load, so they're quite good to use. Number two, it's better to do this with two people, but I'm on my own today um, because of the lockdown and everything else. Anyway, um, just be careful. You saw when I um, picked this up initially, it kind of snag in a few things. Just make sure it's not over anything that can break. It caught up a little bit on this fuel line, but I hadn't really put any load on it yet. So I just dropped it down and just removed it off there. It was on one of these studs or next to this heat shield. Just, you know, just make sure it's not gonna, don't try and lift it up off the distributor or something stupid like that and it will just ping it off. Um, also, I've got it flat on the ground here, but on a bit of wood and that helps a lot because um, you want to jack this thing slightly up. Um, one, you need to be able to get um, this, um, which is the spider for the engine standoff, but also you want it jacked up so that you can place the gearbox on. So now what I can do is um, take this off, 17s, so I can just quickly um, buzz them off. And that one. This one. And then there's one at the back here. It's, um, so it's got a nut on the back which is a 19. So just take off all of those and the spider will come off. So I've just quickly got some brake cleaner. I'm just going to spray over all of this um, and make sure it's all nice and clean. I'm going to do the same to the clutch. This is obviously the flywheel so that's quite um, dirty in there, some clutch material. And I'm just going to spray over all the components, not the, I'll leave the actual. Some Loctite. 243 and that's going to be because I've got some uh, flywheel bolts here ARP and I've also got ARP uh, clutch bolts with a little shoulder as well and one thing that's also important to mention is just check the threads are all good notice a little lump of this glue in there I'll just grab that out and just spray around with this um, brake clean inside those holes Right, I've cleaned off all these ARP bolts. You can see that. Um, I'm going to put a dab of this uh, Loctite 243 on. And there's a witness mark on the back here, which you can just about see. that one up and just do the same to all the others eight. I'm just going to run these home. These are all 19 mil double hex. I'm just going to run them all home just with a 3 8 ratchet and I'm just checking for any resistance or anything because um, these should all go in nice and smooth. I don't want to cross thread anything. So the spec for these is a 128.8 newton meters or 95 foot pounds. The standard bolts is 103 newton meters and 75.98 foot pound feet. So I'm going to go obviously with 100, 
28.8. So I know you guys are going to appreciate this because I've actually numbered everything now. Okay, let's go. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. And finally, number eight. There we have it. So, just so we all know, that is how we had it there. Well, everything's kind of turned around, hasn't it? But you get the idea. It's in a star pattern. And then if you come here, obviously if you're putting a torque on, you need to oppose it. So I just placed a 19 mil deep and a bar on the floor. Um, so I've got no one else who can hold it for me and it seemed to have worked pretty well. These flywheel bolts are um, M8 by 1.25. You can see they've got a bit of, um, see the adhesive on them, not locked tight. So I'm just cleaning them up by just whacking them through a die quickly and uh, just taking all of that off. You can see these are all um, cleaned up now. One other thing I wanted to mention on these ARPs is you've got a little shoulder on there. You see a little chamfer? there that goes towards the head the bolt so the chamfer is pointing up and it's just a flat side the other side not so fast I need to have a look at this um, the marks on here you can see that it's been getting incredibly hot um, at different points it's even more visible um, on the actual uh, flywheel itself but either way what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand this down and just remove any high points. Um, it's actually worse on the flywheel than it is on this clutch plate. So I'm just going to sand that down now and just show what it looks like afterwards. I'm up sanding it with 180 grit paper and as you can see there's a bit of a coincidence where it seems to be in line the big wear points there, there and there next to this part of the spring the clutch but either way um, that is a lot better than it was and I'm going to go and have a look at the flywheel itself. The flywheel doesn't look that bad on camera but when you run your finger around it you can feel some raised bits so again what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just do a light sand on it as well I'm going to um, put some tape in the middle here just so I can't get any of the sand in here um, and this will all be fine because I'll just I'll blow it out with the um, brake clean. So I haven't wiped it down yet, but I've just thought I'd show you the um, setup I've got. I've got this paper in the middle, which is kind of sticky paper. It's actually from a lint roller. It's quite quite well. Um, so I didn't get anything in the middle there. And I've just sanded it down. You can see um, that it's actually looking a lot better than it was. I've definitely got rid of all the high spots, and it's uh, nice and smooth now. That's the finished look of it, again um, a lot better than it was and the uh, proof in the pudding will be the eating and have to see what it's like to drive it once um, the whole thing's back together. Right, after the clean up process um, I'm ready to fit the clutch. Um, I've cleaned all these bolts up by just pulling them through um, the die. So this is the die I've been using, so it's M8 by 1.25 which is the thread of the bolts. Clutch disc going on. Um, obviously, it's not had have a lot of wear, which corresponds to the kind of markings on the inner. So interesting, but this is the way it goes in. Um, so the raised side goes in to the base there, and then I have a clutch alignment tool, which isn't perfect, but it'll do the job. It'll go in the centre there, and it fits nicely in that central bearing, which again, I'm not going to change the bearing because again, it, it moves nice and freely and there's nothing uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So, it's all good. And now I'm going to just line this up in here. Now it'll only go on in one of these three stations. So there's one peg there, one peg there, one peg there. So how's my luck? 
Did I line it up the first time round? No. I don't think so. Did I? No. So turn it around to the next one. Second attempt. Not too bad. So. Right, it's going to apply Loctite. That'll do it. More than enough. I've applied Loctite to all the others. I'm just going to get my single hex uh, 10 mil. Begin to thread it up. I'm not being tight at the moment because I still need to centralise where my clutch is. Just to show you what I mean by clutch alignment, um, I've got the clutch alignment tool in there. And if I pick that out, you can see the bearing at the back. And it's important to be right in the middle. It's going to be hard for you to see on camera. That's in a fairly decent place. Um, but this is, I can go in there like that, and then you can move it up or down. And just make sure that the centre of this uh, spline here is in the centre. Um, respective to that bearing at the back you should be in a good place to uh, place the gearbox on so yeah align it and then you can start nipping up these bolts so I do one in each of the thirds there and then do another two another three and then another three and then that will do up all nine um, so I'm just going to align it first and then just nip it up lightly just with um, a ratchet first and then I'll put the torque on it Right, then I've got my torque wrench and it's been um, set to 25 because that's actually the bottom reading this torque wrench can do. And uh, I've got my 10mm single hex on there. And all I'm going to do is uh, come in here and I'll firstly, I'll do the one to the left. There we go, to the left of the peg, then this one, and then this one down here you won't particularly be able to see and then to the right of the peg to the right of the peg to the right of the peg and then the one that's on its own here away from the peg and then this one and then this one and then what I'm going to do in there anymore. I'm just going to um, just make sure all of these are set. Right, and that is it, all talked. Right, now it's the uh, time to place the gearbox onto the engine. Now, I never realised what a contentious subject which lubricant to apply onto the shaft. Some people recommend something called Honda Molly Grease, but of course, no one's got that. Um, tell you what I do have, I've got Finish Line Premium Grease from like a long, long time ago, but it says it's got the temperature range up to 180 degrees, so like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to clean down the spline here and apply some of that grease to this and I'll just clean out the actual casing as well. I have to admit that's looking pretty clean isn't it? And get the light on it. So all of that old clutch material has been washed away. Um, this release bearing Looks all right, um, so that's staying. Um, and then really, it's a matter of applying some of this grease, which I'll just do now, because I've had a little look at the threads. Um, now, you all know this is a rebuilt gearbox. It's a cable operated gearbox, hence the lever and the side here. And um, it's also um, limited slip differential, which is why you can see right through it. Um, so it's a bit of an oddball gearbox, but either way, um, 
let's just spin that over and I'll just apply a bit of this grease to this uh, spine here. Right, the bolts are copper slipped. Transmission has got a greased input shaft, and this thing is going in. Too bad now was it? It's a very small gap. Um, nothing to write home about. So now just thread these lovely copper slipped bolts in. Got five in total. This one's from the back. And this one is from the back there. Now just grab again. Being lazy, electric ratchet, and I'm not mashing anything because the gap is non-existent right the way around here. Painless. Now I'm just going to torque all these up. One point that I didn't make, and it's a good one, is that that release bearing. I've seen that I've still got the grease that I applied back when I fitted the transmission on where it acts on the uh, fork so that didn't need doing again but you would do that again so you'd pop the release bearing out maybe put a little bit of grease on there but it's all moving nicely anyway and then here are the bolts so you've got one behind here two three four and then one behind there five and now i can uh, hoist this uh, engine in the air again and then I can fit this um, little brace which is one of the peculiarities of the B18C4 I think compared to some of the other engines that came in these cars is that it has an aluminium brace that goes the whole way across it and I've also got a starter motor to fit so I'm going to um, first of all I'm grab the starter motor a uh, long bolt and a shorter bolt and I'll just clean up the front of that and um, and just place it in. I've just got this um, starter motor here it's very easy to place in so it just goes there like that and then you notice you've got two bolts you've got um, one long one which is goes at the bottom and one short one and you know it's the short one because the threads begin just there and the long one is a straight through bolt so you can't get them mixed up. i just put some copper slip on the threads here and then I can just start doing that one up. Put some copper slip on the threads for this one and then put this right way in and then you've got this 14mm uh, socket and just do both those up. So as you can hear it's raining and I won't be able to get this in the car today um, but I will put that brace on when I've got the whole engine raised up so there's no point in me raising it up uh, and then placing that down again I may as well just raise it up place that brace in there and then whack it in the car so this is pretty much other than a brace um, the full powertrain built up and uh, ready to go in the car so just wait for some good weather and then we'll get it in